dad had a huge classical record collection. And I would go grab his baton and go stand on the piano bench when I was a little kid. And my dad thought I was conducting because I, I wanted to be like my father. Part of his, the, the organization that he was the commander of in the Air Force had a big band. It was called the Falconers when I was in high school, so I would hear them. At first, I kind of liked the big band playing, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to say this, this is how it is. It's like trumpet players playing really high and stuff like that, like really showy kind of playing, but that's what I was originally kind of attracted to. But that's not really what music's about, not being showy or whatever. But there's something about that which, for some reason, interests me. The thing about the jazz program with Julia, first of all, it's young, but it's also it's very traditional. The program very rooted in the tradition of jazz. And oftentimes I've become, in terms of the things that I was really intrigued by and attracted to, was a lot of modern jazz, younger jazz players. It, it helped me, and I think maybe a w more well-rounded musician in terms of being maybe close to that more traditional music a little bit. One, I, I think one guy I can say was heavily influenced by, by people never actually guessed this, but Michael Brecker, man, I mean, I used to listen to him just over and over and over again. There's one song on the first CD called Puddle Jumping, and that's actually kind of kind of influenced by a song of his, which is called uh, Delta City Blues, where he does similar things to that, but on the saxophone. I've been fortunate to play with you know, a lot of musical settings that are not typical to non American music and not jazz. You know, Latin music, a lot of Latin music really influenced me. It's a huge learning experience anytime you record your own music and you put it out there for everybody to see. So to me, I felt like I'm putting a piece of myself in the line for all these people to see. Personally, I tend to joke around a lot and maybe put up, I don't want to say I put up a shield with people, but you know, and when I write, I think I'm really writing what I hear. I don't know, it's, it's different than the way I carry myself speaking wise. Here at Julia, they have guys who come guest lecture notes like, uh, like Christian McBride and Benny Green, Nicholas Payton was here. It's really cool to hear them like, acknowledge and say that we had a whole different, we, we had a great when we came because like the early 90s to mid 90s there was all these major record companies like Columbia, Warner Brothers, and for some reason they decided to dump a whole bunch of money into jazz and pushing all these young artists. And so all these guys had that and Mark, that's what really jumpstarted their careers. The guys when they're putting, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars behind jazz musicians, it just doesn't happen to them. Except for a few guys, but not really any more. The first CD I did, I tried to I tried to shop it to some labels or the best I could at unsolicited stuff. So originally I tried to get it on label, and I couldn't. So I released it right for my, myself. It's pretty easy to release it. You can get it on iTunes. The young jazz musicians are writing really interesting music, you know, beautiful music too. But you don't usually see young people that much at jazz concerts or going out to see young people. Somehow I started getting a, a subscription to Downbeat. I didn't ask for it. I don't know. Somehow it started coming to my, in and out of my house. And I read this stuff. I don't know, you know half the words these guys that are writing about jazz are using, you know. But it's written in such a way that I think this is so pretentious and like it's counterproductive to music. You know? I don't want to see people. I hate to see people taking stuff too seriously. There's nothing wrong with that, but maybe there is a little bit. I don't know. I think it's just sometimes when you play for people that they're like. They're going to hear you play because I think they're supposed to. They're going to hear you play to be sophisticated people. It's funny sometimes because you think about how does an audience member appreciate, like if I sat down here and I told you all these mm. harmonies and what they mean to like somebody who might be playing them or what they're hearing, that's probably not going to mean anything to you. You're not going to know what that means or whatever. So there's, I mean, there is, it's many more technically uh, denser music in terms of the technical layers to it or whatever. Not the same thing would happen if you try to explain most pop tunes here. You know, people are going to say, what does that mean? So it's not really what it's about. Most people that are in quote unquote the jazz business that are traveling under their own names and making a living playing their own stuff, most of the people have to travel and do that kind of stuff. Um, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head that can make a living playing jazz in New York. It's also a, kind of like a great benefit of doing this. You know. Places I've gotten to go because of playing trombone, and that's a place I never, when I you know, fifth grade, I never would have thought I would have gone to some of these places.